One of the things I wanted to really understand better was ZFS, especially the expansion, configuration, and performance differences between the various ZFS storage configurations. In today's video, we'll go through the setup, how to expand your storage, and test a couple of different configurations to determine speed differences. Whether you're a home server user like TrueNAS or Unraid, or you use the NAS that supports ZFS, then you might want to watch the rest of this video. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe and hit that notifications so you'll find out when there's new content. And if you found this video useful, please give it a like as it does help support the channel. As my channel covers various storage options and storage technology, it was inevitable that the topic of ZFS would come up sooner or later. Before we get into the concept, I do want to take an opportunity to thank Daniel Francis Lyon at QNAP for a lot of the information he provided me to better understand the fundamentals of ZFS. If you have a NAS unit or a server that uses ZFS, you may already be interested in learning more about it, as well as how to expand it. Before we get into a quick demo of how to expand your storage, as well as do some performance testing, there are some fundamentals we need to know. Looking at the chart below at the highest hardware level, we can see that there's the pool or the Z pool. The pool plays the role of the aggregator and communicates directly with the file system. You can have one or more V devs, which we'll talk about here in a second, that are configured into the pool that make up your total storage. And how we configure those V devs, or otherwise known as an array, and how it's added to the pool determines the fault tolerance, storage capacity, as well as your options for expansion. Going down one level is the VDEV itself, or the drive array. The VDEV is the actual drive configuration, in other words, the RAID level of the array. To better understand the VDEV's options, let's look at the minimum number of drives and kind of compare it to a typical NAS RAID configuration. If you're using two drives, by default, they will configure it in a mirror configuration, meaning the capacity is equal to a single drive, and all the data is duplicated. With RAID Z1, you need three or more drives. Two drives for capacity and a single drive for parity providing one drive of fault tolerance. The more drives that you add to this configuration, the more storage that you get, but you still only get one drive of fault tolerance. With RAID Z2, you need a minimum of four drives, two drives for capacity, two drives for fault tolerance. Again, more drives that are used in creating this configuration are used for capacity, and you still only get two drives of fault tolerance. With RAID Z3, you need five drives or more, two drives for capacity and three drives for parity, providing three drives of fault tolerance. Again, the more drives that are used in creating this VDEV are used to increase capacity, and you still only get three drives of fault tolerance. This configuration isn't really that common and typically only used for arrays that are around 10 or more drives, because you lose three full drives to fault tolerance, so it makes it kind of impractical for smaller arrays. One important thing to remember as we go through this storage configuration and expansion is that when you build a VDEV, the only way to change it is to delete it and recreate it. This will become important as we learn how to initially build and expand our storage. The pool, which is really an aggregation of one or more VDEVs that appears to, to the file system as a single storage. If we look at the chart, if we built our first VDEV with three one terabyte drives configured in a RAID Z1, we'd have a total storage of two terabytes. Now let's say that we have an eight bay NAS unit or storage unit, and we wanna add more storage to our device. What options do we have? Since we currently just can't add a drive to the VDEV, though that feature is coming in the future, you have basically three options. The first is to wipe out the VDEV and rebuild it with additional drives. But that's a lot of work, and if you have data on the array, it'll get wiped out. So this isn't usually practical unless you were going to just do a massive rebuild in the first place. The second option is to replace each drive in the VDEV one at a time, let it rebuild, go to the next drive, and go through the entire VDEV that you have, replacing it with larger drives. To do this, though, all the drives must be the same size, and you won't see the extra space until the last drive rebuilds. In this option, the performance will be about the same as with smaller drives, and you need to replace all the drives at one time before you realize the extra space. Lastly, you can set up and add another VDEV. There is a couple of caveats when you do this, however. Though the VDEVs technically do not have to be the same size, 
it's always best practice if you try and keep them the same size as whenever possible. Again, technically, you can mix different RAID Z levels. It's also best practice to try to keep those the same as well. When you're using two VDEVs, performance will increase as the pool will be able to write to the two VDEVs simultaneously. However, if one of the VDEVs is really full before you added your second one, you won't really see the performance gain until they start to balance out because the pool will actually favor the emptier array and start writing data to that. The same philosophy will apply to VDEVs that are two different sizes. Now that we've got a bit more understanding about how ZFS works, let's do some quick testing. As I don't have a NAS unit that supports ZFS, I'm going to use TrueNAS to demonstrate how to create our first VDEV and pool, test the performance, and then add a second VDEV to see how it compares in performance. As this isn't really a TrueNAS tutorial, I'm going to go straight to the storage section where we can first set up our first VDEV. Looking at the storage tab, this is where we're going to create our first pool and our first VDEV. In this list, we can see that there's six SSDs listed here. I'm going to go ahead and select the first three, add them, create a name for the pool to create our first pool in VDEV. As you can see from the screen, once everything is created and formatted, we're looking at a storage pool of about 893 gigs, and we're now ready for our quick test. For purposes of this test, I went and created a data set and a share so that we could run the test. I'm running this on a 10 gig network with no optimization standard frame size. I'll run both read and write tests so that we can compare it to the performance of two VDEVs in the pool. So looking at these tests, we can see that one VDEV, we're getting great read performance. However, the writes are impacted by having to write a parity so that we can have our OneDrive fault tolerance. This, of course, is not using any type of caching, and we're measuring the pure performance of the drive configuration. Next, I want to add one more VDEV to this pool. So let's quickly go back to the storage section select the remaining three drives and add them to the pool. This process is replicating one way or one method that you could use to expand your storage on your own NAS or storage server. Now that we've added the additional three drives and created a separate VDEV, we can see that our pool storage is immediately doubled and we now have 1.7 terabytes of available storage. Let's clarify how the storage is configured so there's no confusion. The two VDEVs have been configured each with drives in a RAID Z1, so that you can lose up to one drive in each VDEV. So theoretically, I can lose a total of two, one in each dev. However, if I lose two drives in either VDEV, I'll lose the entire storage pool. And the reason is, in this configuration, the VDEVs are separate and they're set up as independent arrays that each have one drive of fault tolerance but the data they contain is not duplicated in each VDEV, or I would not get additive storage. VDEV2 is added as its own array alongside of VDEV1 to accumulate the storage. Only one drive can fail in either VDEV before I get in trouble. So now that we've increased our storage pool, let's repeat the same test as we did with a single VDEV and see that here we have actually a different storage. We can now see that both read and write performance are about the same and that I'm currently saturating my 10G network. Not only did we add more storage, but we also significantly added write performance to our storage. As I mentioned earlier, this performance varies based on how full the first array is when you add the second one. The less free space available on the first array, the less the pool will write to the original VDEV. Even though it tries to write to both at the same time, it's going to favor the one that has more storage space. Obviously, when you saturate your network, there isn't any need to get more exotic in your VDEV configuration. However, you might make different storage decisions if you're using a 25 gig or 100 gig network, or if you're writing directly within VMs. What I really wanted to cover today in this video is to show how to expand your current ZFS storage, whether it's in a QNAP or another storage device such as TrueNAS as well as provide some ideas if you're planning your first CFS setup. I wanted to cover the differences in storage efficiency and performance between the different VDEVs and hopefully provide a better foundation and understanding of this storage technology. Though I've had years of experience in hardware RAID and software RAID, I'm relatively new to using ZFS and wanted to really learn more about it. There's a lot more to this technology than we covered today. And this video is just the beginning. So let me know in the comments if there's specific areas you'd like me to cover in future videos. 
Well, that's about it for today's video, and don't forget to give it a like if you found this useful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.